What will happen if you put 25 of ChatGPT in one small town? The answer is they want to throw a party. They spread invitation for the party. They make a new friend to each other and invite them to party. And they go asking each other out on a date for the party. And they even coordinate with each other to show up at a party at the right time. That's what we are going to talk about, generative agents, interactive simulacras of human behavior. Very, very interesting paper. They basically put 25 different chat GPT in a small town using the web game interface and see research a lot of different behaviors, see what will happen. Agents display believable social behaviors. What they do is they observe, they plan, and they reflect. This is very interesting architecture, how they kind of put all these things together. If we just put random 25 chat GPT there, it won't be this smooth. So they did some modification and give them memory, give them the ability to retrieve uh, events from memory streams and also give them the ability to do reflections. By the way, if you would like to receive more AI related videos like this, don't forget to give this channel support by subscribing it. Left that right in. So they put this uh, 25 different agents in a small town, digital towns, and they have many different infrastructure. For example, you can see co-living space, park, uh, houses, bar, and supply store, these kind of things, just like playing video games. Oh, you just since it's like actually a small town. And how do agent, an agent would talk to each other. They will give you agent each other like different rule, rules, say you are engineers, you are a, a bartender, you're a barista, you are kind of a clerk in the shop, clothes shop, they give them very different background of somebody's researcher, and they will start, in, after in, in, initialize this situation, they will start to talk to each other, they will just go off, go um, and behave by, by themselves, and the humans will interact, interact with them at all. So they will just develop a lot of a lot of things and a lot of different behaviors just like very, very similar to humans. So let's just see how they communicate with each other. Um, Isabella says, I'm still weighing my options, but I have been discussing the elections with uh, Sam Moore. What are your thoughts on him? And Tom said, to be honest, I don't like Sam more. So they basically they talk in a plain language, natural language, like what we how we talk to each other. And this is how they spread the information as well. They don't have other people's memory. They can only uh, get what other people are thinking, what other people have done by talking to them. So let's just uh, look at how these agents live their life. So they see a day in the life of this agent. So in the morning, they do morning routine, they wake up, they brush their teeth, they take a shower, they cook breakfast, like human family. And they're catching up with each other, they pay to pack in the, and the beginning of the work day. And this is what they talk about. Apparently, John is a son, say, good morning, Eddie. John is a father. Good morning, Eddie. Did you sleep well? And Eddie says, okay, good morning, Dad. I slept great. That's good. What are you working on today? And AD say, I am working on a new music compositions, blah, 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 blah. Say, I'm going to finish that. So in the afternoon, they have this other conversation. May said, did AD already left for school? And John said, yes, he did leave. He, did le he just left. He's working on a music composition for his class. So he, they have memory. Even this is like a few hours later, this guy John still remember why his sons talked to him because they have memory stream which what I will talk about later how they set up this memory stream because in ChatGPT they doesn't have this kind of uh, mechanism how to give ChatGPT memory is very emerging topic so they said blah 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 great I'm so proud of him the conversation is kind of natural like two couples will have what two couples will have and so this is how they interact with each other. And when they interact with each other, you can see information, how information spreads. So it's called information diffusion. If I talk, uh, if I talk to somebody on this topic uh, about my things, and this person will talk to another person, then another person will talk to more people. So this is how information spread, right? For, for example, Sam say, hi, Tom, how's it going? Tom say, okay, uh, good sense, what's going on? Sam say, 
I actually want to talk to you about something. I am actually running for mayor in the upcoming local elections. So Sam, Tao, Tom, I'm actually running for a mayor. And what will happen is、uh, Tom will talk to other people. So John say I heard. I heard Sam Moore is running for mayor, and、uh, Tom said, "I do think he has a good chance." So they kind of talk about each other's、uh, gossip. That's how information spread. And I will give you something very interesting. So they want to throw out a, a party on Valentine's Day, and it, initially Isabella just came up with this idea. It's not like human told Isabella to do this. It's Isabella just came up with this idea. So they came up with this idea, then she started、uh, talking to. Other people and other people talk to other people. So in the end, twelve agents out of twenty-five know Isabella is going to have a party and they're going kind of to show up. So this is how information spread. And like what what you have what happens in human society. You may wonder how would these guys have memory of this. The challenge in here is reasoning requires a large experience, right? You need to have a lot of experience to be able to reason. To do make some decision, the approach is to create memory stream records、uh, as agents' experiences. So agent have, will have a memory stream, and it contains a lot of memory records. And when you ask this agent something, this agent will retrieve use your questions and to retrieve the relevant events and based on three criteria like recency. Importance and relevance to then retrieve these events and will become the input to ChatGPT and ChatGPT will respond to that. So that's how they retrieve memory. Let's just see how how this works. So memory stream, you can as you can see, it's a time step. Uh, they recording what happened, what events has happened. So, uh, the first event desk is idle, back is idle, closer is idle, like very boring things. But sometimes it's very interesting thing. Isabella. Is stretching, and Isabella is writing her journal. So you can see this thing. So, and when this guy asks Isabella, "What are you looking for the most right now?" So Isabella will retrieve a few different events and calculate their、uh, relevance, the important score. So you can see Isabella is excited to be planning a Valentine's Day party. Blah blah blah. This is the first one. So the score is very high. And another one is like ordering decorations for a party. Third one is researching ideas for the parties. You can see they have different、uh, retrieval score. The highest one is about a party, excited for the party. So Isabella will answer, "I'm looking forward to the Valentine's Day party. I'm planning and hop cafe、uh, because it retrieve this party excitement maybe、uh, from." It's from like few days ago, but because this memory stream is Isabella is able to contain,、uh, reach and retrieve this memory and response. So that's very important thing because、uh, if we don't do this, the、uh, ChatGPT will just randomly respond to you, right? So how they set up this memory stream, it's very brilliant because memory is like that's limited. You cannot just have unlimited memory. So they create another component called reflection. Um, the problem, yeah, is like you cannot just、uh, when when you observe things, right? They like the bag is idle, something's idle. You cannot just、uh, put everything in your memory. Like we see so many different events every day, we don't remember them because that not all of them are important. We can call memory is like short term memory, and reflection is like long term memory. So when they they will calculate something, they will calculate something. They generated a. Uh, based on their important score, if some events is really really important, they will move it. They will store it as reflections with memory pointers. That means they move it to the long term memory. This is more. Is I'm using an analogy how human brains work. We have short term and long term memory. So if the we'll first store things in short term memory. It's like the memory is here, memory stream here. If these things it's important, we find out this is important. We show us so many times. We will move it to long term memory. Here is called reflection. So this is how agent store things. So we can see he has memory stream, and you will retrieve. You receive something, and you will just look at for,、uh, looking for its memory stream, and retrieve something. And retrieve memories will be used to act 
plan or reflect. If you reflect, reflect, they will be put into the memory stream. If you use it to plan, you plan something, so you be uh, put into your memory stream. So you remember what you do. Maybe you plan something to do something tomorrow, right? So what will happen tomorrow is you will look at your memory and say, "Damn, I need to do this." So this is how this agent works. Very, very uh, smart way to lay out this. Of course, they got inspired by human brains. So this is how they do a reflection. So it's like a hierarchical reflection. Um, it has different reflection and reflection uh, in the bottom tree. Tree. There's a ups- ups- so this examples are crazy, right? It just feels like it's like sim- simula- very very good simulation. But sometimes they still make errors. For example, some behavior like erratic. If- Behavior is due to the misclassification of the proper behavior or location-specific norms. For example, they would do something crazy in the restaurant because they didn't know you shouldn't do that in the restaurant. They maybe play baseball in the rest- at a restaurant. They just didn't know because they, they misclassified classify that. The solution is to introduce social norm. So they introduce some social norm, uh, but sometimes it backfire. They, they made an agent to be too polite, too formal. Um, sometimes like just uh, doesn't make sense. So every time you're so formal, even with your closest friend, with your family, it shouldn't uh, be like that. So these are the kind of things that you need to adjust to make them more human-like. You may wonder what, what's the whole point of this, right? Uh, the point of this is applications is, first of all, it's an interesting experiment. And secondly, I think that can be used to for many cases. For example, you can build a very interesting game. Uh, now a lot of games, most games have uh, NPC. NPC is like non-playable uh, player. Like you couldn't do it's very repeating to, to say things. It's very boring. So if you can use this kind of way to give them life, basically, so you you game will become very unpredictable and very very interesting. You can play all all day every day. You go you won't get bored because you will never be able to predict agents. Uh, those NPCs behavior, right? And you can this, use this to build social robots to kind of interact with humans so humans won't get bored. Uh, for me, more interesting thing is you can use this to do s- economic experiments uh, because humans are not uh, rationals. That's why like the earlier economic th- theories always failing. If we can introduce these human-like agents to uh, economic experiments, they will be very interesting. Maybe you'll be able to predict stock market more, more accurately because you introduce some human-like behavior. But definitely, you need to in- inject more irrational be- mindset, like humans. Now, the most of the language models that so too, I would say, too calm. And also, you can do social experiments, like introduce some law, see what will happen, what this world will happen. This is the kind of thing that we never be able to do before, and. In the future, I believe this kind of simulator will become more more popular and people will be able to really use this to do something they can contribute to the society. So uh, as a gamer, as an AI researcher, I really think this is awesome. This is kind of very interesting. What a time to be alive. It's so interesting. So um, yes, this is the paper and you will, you will like to receive more content, AI content like this. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Uh, give me some support and like, share this video. Other than that, enjoy your simula- simulation and I will see you next time.